Welcome everybody. I noticed there were no end user videos on the Plea 8068 quite yet, so I thought I would put one up. I'll go through a bit of an unboxing here and just show off everything that comes with it, and then we'll get it set up in the observatory. As with most of the William Optics telescopes, it comes with a very nice soft case that'll be good for kind of lugging it around and keeping it safe during transit. This one comes with a very nice looking package certificate of inspection. My old ones were always just a basically printed piece of paper. I'd say probably the most important stat everyone's interested in here is focal length is 260 millimeters and the speed is f3.8 which is pretty fast for this kind of scope. They included a little allen key adjuster to handle everything which is kind of nice not that we don't all have millions of these sitting around already and all the other little knurled knobbed lock screws come in their own little packages and are ready to go They include both an M48 and M58 threaded adapter for the back. One comes pre-installed, the other is in a separate package. Now as we get to the scope itself, I noticed immediately that it's heavier than the William Optics GT71, which was my primary scope, even though this is a wider field and slightly smaller scope as overall package. Uh, all those seven lenses definitely add a little bit of heft. The internal focuser design is super smooth. Uh, there is a tension adjustment, but I don't think you'd ever really need it with it being internal, and likely with this being attached to any sort of autofocuser. I doubt there will be any kind of sag or adjustment in there for moving. And of course, like with every scope William Optic sells, they like to brag about their patented Batonov mask focuser built into the lens cap. And that's of course present here as well. Everything here just feels really solid, really well put together. The rotator is very nice and has a lot of tension to it. I've added rotators to other telescopes that always had a little bit of slop and usually introduced some tilt. Here I didn't feel any movement uh, moving around any of the components and I would expect that the tilt will be fairly well consistent and can be adjusted with the built-in tilt corrector. Scope's also pretty well balanced on the dovetail that it comes with. It seems like it won't need too much adjustment to fit on most setups. Now we'll 
go ahead and get my ZWO autofocuser set up and then get the camera installed. I do have to take a brief moment of playing around and fiddling with it as I did not read the instructions and discovered that the screw you remove is not the set screw for the knob, it is an access hole to get to the two set screws on the internal part of the knob that they, you can remove. So enjoy my troubles. Once I discovered the proper way to actually remove it by reading the instructions, it actually went very smoothly and it's a very smart design. You do need to remove the dovetail just to get at all the proper screws locations for mounting the bracket for the focuser. Now with the dovetail getting back on, I simply needed to double check the back focus requirements. Uh, the important thing to note here is a lot of people seem to believe since this was a seven element scope that it was a Pets ball. It is not. It is a more traditional triplet type setup with several more lenses in there doing the flattening and correcting. So you do need proper back focus. The prescribed is pretty standard across most, which is 55 millimeters. That said, obviously once you get it in there, you may need to do some more fine tuning to find the perfect back focus based on filters and anything else optically you might have in the path. And with my ASI 183 GT, which is a monochrome version of their 183 setup with a built-in filter wheel. Super convenient. This was my first camera after moving from a DSLR. Uh, it makes it a pretty easy breeze to get things set up. You can see me getting it all set up on the mount in my backyard observatory. As is pretty common with these, I ended up needing to flip the OTA over so that the autofocuser and everything didn't interfere with the actual saddle adjustment knobs.
there was unfortunately clouds that night so i was able to get it into focus but there wasn't anything to really get a first light on i'll follow up with another video with the first light and some sample subs that you guys can take a look at and see if this is the right scope for you